everybody welcome to my youtube channel happy thanksgiving so um i know that i have not posted in like two weeks but i just got a new job and life has been a little crazy but what better way to come back than to make food videos so um in each video i'm going to be doing um i'm going to be showing you how i make my dishes so i'm going to make my famous baked macaroni and cheese and then i'm going to do another video of me making moro which is rice and beans hispanic style then i'm going to be doing another version of me making pink potato salad so yes guys again happy thanksgiving i thank god for allowing you to see another day another holiday another year so thank you god and yeah stay tuned bye hello guys welcome back so i'm going to be making my famous popular baked macaroni and cheese so i just want to show you all of the cheeses i have so i have a smoked gouda very good I have a Parmesan cheese. I have a Chipotle Gouda. This gives it a little spicy kick to it. Monterey Jack. Pepper Jack. One of my favorites, Munster. And I actually just picked this up today. It sounded interesting, smoked Gouda with bacon. And of course, I also have just like my regular shredded already sharp cheddar cheese. And this one is an Italian mix. An Italian mix. It has mozzarella in it. It has provolone, Parmesan, Asiago, and Romano cheeses. So um, when you are making your baked macaroni and cheese, let me just say that you're going to shred it all. You're going to shred it all. But you're, when you make your cheese sauce, you're only going to put half of your cheese in. So we're going to shred this whole thing and then we're going to start our cheese sauce. So I'll be right back. And of course, guys, when making your baked macaroni and cheese, you're going to use whatever cheeses that you like. I normally always like mix it up. Like uh, one time I put a tomato basil cheese in. Um, but I haven't been able to find that cheese, but it really depends on what cheese you want. These are just the normal cheeses that I use, except for the smoked Gouda with bacon. This one just sounded interesting, so I just bought this one. I've never used it before, but normally I always do Monterey Jack, Munster, Pepper Jack, Chipotle Gouda. And um, I've been doing the Parmesan one. I've been doing the Parmesan one as of late. So, yeah, it depends on whatever cheese you want. I also used to put Velveeta cheese in mine. Again, it depends on whatever cheese you like. Hey, guys. So, I'm back. So, I'm done grating, like, all eight, nine of those cheeses. Let me turn this light on. Yeah. So, this is it. There's a lot of cheese, so I needed, like, so many plates. So, yes done grating the cheeses so i got my water on my stove boiling got my elbow macaroni right here once this is boiling then you can put your macaroni in and of course it depends how much you're making how many people um it's only myself and one other person right now so um yeah so it's only two of us so i'm only gonna make you know a medium amount so uh to make your cheese sauce you're going to need heavy whipping cream half and half milk whatever you want so you're gonna start making your heavy whipping cream right when this goes in because you don't want to make it too early and then it sits and then you know it gets all sticky and you know not good so yeah once you pour this in you're going to put on a smaller pot on your stove and you're going to pour your heavy whipping cream in and then you're going to pour half so this is all of it grated but like i said before you're not going to put in all of it because you have to drizzle some on top and of course i'll be showing you guys how to do everything so we're going to put in half of this cheese for the cheese sauce and then leave the other half for the actual macaroni so yeah, um, I will be right back when I make my cheese sauce. So guys, my water 
is boiling as you can see so we're just going to simply pour a little bit of olive oil in the water so this is to make sure that the pasta does not stick together because when you start making it you're going to notice that it's like sticking together so just pour a little bit of oil a little bit of olive oil inside of the water just make sure it does not stick and then of course you can add your salt your pepper all of that good stuff let me get a little spoon yeah it's completely boiling now i put a little salt and pepper in that and then i just like to mix around the olive oil to make sure you know it's all over the water and then pour your macaroni so yes this is how it is right now oopsie just got the screen foggy sorry guys so just stir a little bit you know and it may look like a little bit guys but this is gonna soon like these noodles are of course not done so it's all tiny but when it's done it's gonna blow up and it's gonna look very 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 big so while this is cooking we shall start the best thing ever and that's the cheese sauce this is gonna make your mac and cheese go from whoa to whoa this is so damn good period <laughs> this is gonna make it super creamy super cheesy if you've ever had dry mac and cheese um it's probably because they did not make a cheese sauce the cheese sauce gives it that extra creamy delicioso flavor so let's get started see this is running over well it's about to run over so i'm gonna turn it just a little down voila so guys of course let me just move this my camera a little bit more back so guys of course of course of course do not forget to wash your hands it's like before you when you first start like you know before you grate the cheese and everything because you know it's gonna get all over your hands and your hands is gonna touch the cheese and you know all that good stuff so please make sure to wash your hands so let's get started on this i have a gas stove so i always have to make sure it's actually lit <laughs> so for now you can turn it on high so just open up your heavy whipping cream guys just gonna open it up we're gonna pour like gonna pour like half of it in so this is my heavy whipping cream um this one was is from land o lakes but you know you could get it from wherever you want by whoever you want so my heavy whipping cream is inside of the pot. So we're gonna wait for the heavy whipping cream to get a little warm, just a little warm, and then we're gonna start adding in our cheeses. So you can put the heavy whipping cream on like a medium-ish high. You know, you don't want to evaporate the milk, you feel me? So guys, remember with your macaroni, you're gonna keep stirring. Like, even though the olive oil is to make it, you know, not get stuck together, you still just have to keep on stirring. Keep on stirring. So, this half and half is warm. So, we're going to start to add our cheeses. So, remember, guys, I told you, do not add all of your cheese. You're only going to add half of it to make your cheese sauce. So you're just gonna add in your cheeses. Add in your cheeses. Yep, yep, yep. I'm telling you guys, if you follow my recipe, 
like everybody says that like whenever i cook this for my friends all of them are just like oh my god like this is the best macaroni and cheese ever you know but like everybody agrees that my mac and cheese is up there and of course it didn't start up there i like you know read some recipes and incorporated my own you know ideas and yeah eventually my friends just deemed me the best mac and cheese maker like whenever i post it on instagram everybody's always like why don't you sell it like sell it sell it sell it like i'll come pick it up i'll buy it blah blah i'm just like it's a good idea but now like i don't live in new york anymore so of course like i would have to get a new fan base out here if i want to start selling my mac and cheese but like i don't know it's always been something that i've always wanted to do like i've always wanted to like open my own restaurant because i love food so much but you know let's just see anyways so yeah i'm just making sure that i get all a little bit of all of the cheeses that i grated because sometimes Sometimes you'll be missing some. So yeah, guys, so, so far, this is how it looks. Yeah, so see how right now it's clumpy and it's gritty and you know, all of that stuff. So that's why you just have to keep on stirring it. Keep on stirring it and eventually it's just gonna become a smooth, beautiful mixture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's starting to get that smooth consistency that I just love so much. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to add a sharp cheddar cheese. Yes, it is the perfect, it's perfect right now. Let me just add some sharp cheddar into this. You always need your sharp cheddar. And remember, keep stirring. I have to stir my mac right now. just spilled some by accident it's gonna get a little messy guys I try not to you know let it get messy but it happens I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more down you don't want it to burn at the bottom you know but let me show you guys right now so look you see how now it's not clumpy anymore it's not gritty now it's just, it looks like water, kind of, you know? This is your cheese sauce. And the macaroni, it's still cooking. Keep stirring, keep stirring, you know? I'm gonna add a little bit more sharp cheddar. That's enough. Now, as I said, guys, it's very important that you keep some cheese to drizzle. You see, like, as you can see, I still got all this cheese. I haven't even opened this one yet because I just want this one to be for my drizzle. Or maybe I might add a little bit into this cheese sauce. It depends on how I'm feeling. So I still got all of this cheese left. Yes, it's the perfect consistency. This cheese sauce is completely done. So this is what I mean by how when I say that it's gonna just have a smooth texture. It literally just looks like water. That's how smooth it looks. It's not gritty, it's not clumpy. Perfect. And this took all of like seven minutes. At the end, you're just gonna keep it on low. So as I said, it does not burn. The macaroni is also done. So right now I'm just going to drain it. 
Ooh. So it's so much macaroni that you're probably not even going to use all of it. But I have my drainer. So you just drain the mac. Drain the mac, mac, mac. And then this is when we're gonna add our eggs and our seasonings. And of course, our ingredient, which is cream of chicken. So shout out to Gina Young on YouTube. This is where I got my cream of chicken idea from, and it definitely adds a little punch. Again, shout out to Gina Young on YouTube. She does a lot of nice cooking videos. I aspire to cook like her. She's the best. Okay, so right now this macaroni is all drained. So I'm just going to put it into this huge pot to make it easier for my seasonings. Okay guys, so you just need eggs, your seasonings. I'm going to use garlic powder and onion powder and of course your regular salt and pepper so put two eggs in i like brown eggs those are my favorite eggs but of course you can use whatever eggs you want white eggs brown eggs blue eggs whatever you like so crack make sure not to get no shells in that One more. So yes, just gonna wash my hands on the side. Wash my hands off a little bit. So, so this is the onion powder that I love so much because it has green onions and parsley in it. I love this onion powder. It's from Mick Cormick. So yeah, just gonna add some of that in and you're gonna stir it in as well. And then this is garlic powder. Of course, you can always use whatever brand you want, same thing. And then I have salt and pepper in a shaker already, but I'm also going to add some fresh pepper that I, grate, that I have a grater with. Fresh pepper is always the best with the grinder. Done. We're also going to add just a stick. Well, like half a stick. Well, I mean, actually, you could just literally do the whole entire stick. So, I heard this butter is very good. Pure Irish butter, unsalted. So, I'm going to use this one. It's actually my first time. I just heard it's very good, so I just bought it. <laughs> so, now we're just going to cut off a piece of this butter a good piece of it we're gonna cut off a good piece of it i'm gonna cut off that much so i cut off like this much because it is a lot of macaroni i'm just gonna cut it in like pieces so it's just not one big clump so one throw it in there guys Literally just gonna throw it in there. Oopsie. Stir, stir, stir. Mm. And it smells so good. Like it's literally seasoned to the gods. And we're going to add more olive oil, just a tad. Yep, yep, yep. Like two capfuls or so. You don't want your mac too greasy, so do not add a lot. Stir, stir, stir. 
And then, as I said, guys, Gina Young's secret recipe calls for cream of chicken. I got it by Campbell's, as I say all the time. You can get it from whoever you want. So we're gonna grate this. I mean, we're gonna open this. Again, cream of chicken. This is how it looks inside. So pour, pour, pour. Pour, pour, pour. I'm gonna just take some of that out. So guys, honestly, I would say that this takes two people kind of because it's a lot of layering and you know if you want to do it fast i guess you would need two people but it's just gonna be me so guys you are just going to oil your pan you're going to do this so that it does not stick your mac and cheese will not stick to the bottom and then you know burn so just make sure that the whole entire pan is covered with delicious olive oil lotion the size guys literally everything we do not want it sticking and burning yeah that's just what i like to do i like to make sure that the edges and everything has enough lotion on it. I'm just gonna put a tad bit more on this side, this side, and on this side. You can use your hand if you want. It's actually easier that way <laughs> than using so yeah guys, this is just how it looks. It's all lotioned up. So we're going to start. So I have everything next to me guys. I have my shredded cheeses. My mac is right there. My cheese sauce is right there. So we're gonna get going. So this part is really fun because you're literally just lay layering it. Layer, layer. So of course, take some mac. Take some mac lac. And you're going to distribute nice and evenly on your pan, like so. Okay. And now you are going to add some sauce. So I'm just stirring it a little bit. So you see guys, I'm just adding some sauce. Yeah. So guys, you wanna get your sauce and the cheese in the edges and all of that. A lot of people, they seem to they seem to forget, guys, a lot of people do not put their enough cheese in the crevices. I'm talking about all on the corners, all on the corners. You want to get it literally everywhere. You don't want no blank, uncheese delicious spaces in your mac and cheese. See, you see how I have it everywhere? In the corners literally is every single place and then after you put your cheese sauce you're going to now get your shredded cheese and you're going to do the same thing see i like to start around the corners first and then i like to come in so i'm just going in the corners i'm doing corners first In some of my other cheese corners first. Corners first. 
and then that's when you just then start to just fill in the middle see we're filling in the middle as I said, guys, do not forget to wash your hands. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna add some sharp cheddar. Okie dokie, guys. Now, you see how delicioso that looks so far? Now, take some more mac. It's literally like lasagna, guys. I can always compare it to lasagna. It's, it's the layering. It's the layering for me. It's giddy. You guys are literally going to love me. Like you, you guys, once you make this for yourselves, you're going to come back and you're going to be like essence. Like where have you been all of my life? And don't worry guys, if you have a lot of cheese sauce left and a lot of cheese left, it definitely does happen. And like I said, guys, go one more time. Get some cheese sauce. Because I'm definitely probably going to have a lot left. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. I'm watching Fresh Prince right now. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see that, guys? You see it? When I, whenever I see a blank space, I'm like, uh, no. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ham. Yes, turkey. Okay. Done with your cheese sauce. So, of course, one more time we go. Start from the corners. Corner, corner, corner. Corner, corner, corner. Yep, all the corners are good. So now we start to go in. I'm literally going to put one more layer in. We're gonna make it work. So, yes guys, yes, yes, yes. So this is how you have it cheesy through all the way throughout guys, all the way throughout. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, People's baked macaroni and cheese only, you know, be cheesy at the top. And then everywhere else is like, what the hell? Like, where the cheese went? It's like when you get that mashed potato bowl from um, KFC, that famous bowl. And um, it only has, like, the cheese and, like, the gravy and all that at top. And then at the bottom is dry. And it's also just, like, nachos. Like, you see, like, whenever I go out and I get nachos, I always tell them to layer my nachos. Because I hate when just all of the toppings are, you know, when all of the toppings are on top. And then you got some dry no topping nachos at the bottom like i always be like don't y'all forget to layer my nachos so yeah so let me show you how much mac i got left because i can't add any more layers this is going to be the final layer so this is how much mac i have left so you definitely will have some left and that is a-okay and this is how much cheese sauce i have left i actually have a lot of cheese sauce left so, let's, let's do it like this right now. So, I'm 
And guys, do not forget to check out my other videos. I'm going to be making moro, which is um, Hispanic rice and beans. I'm also going to be making um, pink potato salad, you know? Just gonna put more on the corners. So yeah. So yeah, guys, this is about how much cheese sauce I have left. I actually have a whole lot left. But as I said, that is A-OK. -okay. So. I do wish I kind of had a deeper pan. I actually thought that this pan was deeper, but I guess not. <laughs> it's deep, but you know, it's just not that deep. I'm probably gonna use all of my shredded cheese now. Going in with the corners. So yeah, just let me add a little bit of sharp cheddar to this. A little bit more of my Italian cheeses. Just to Just gonna add a little bit more sharp on the corners. And voila, guys, literally, that is it. Now you're just gonna bring it all in so it doesn't spill too much over while it's cooking. Just bring it in and tuck, bring it in and tuck. A lot of cheese on the spoon there. So guys, doesn't this look fabu? And I'm about to add some parsley and paprika as well. You can also do that at the end too, but I also like to do it even before. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here's my smoked paprika. And let me re-show you my parsley because I forgot to show you guys. And this is parsley. Both. Well, that one, parsley is from the Cormac. Smoked paprika is from 365. See, guys? Yeah. Looks yummy. Completely yummy. So this is the outcome of my, well, not the outcome, cause you know, it has to cook and all that. But this is before it goes in the oven. So now the only thing left to do is literally to wrap this bad boy up in aluminum foil and set your oven to like 365. It should take like an hour 
or so to cook, maybe a little more. And um, what you're going to do is keep on checking on it. And then 15 minutes before you take it out, you are going to unwrap it and then put it back in the oven without the aluminum foil so that the top could, uh, you know, brown and get really crispy and all that stuff. Because nobody likes, you know, like too soft of a top of baked macaroni and cheese. So so guys, when I am wrapping my aluminum foil, what I like to do is I like to wrap it and like tuck it underneath, you know, so nothing starts to spill and drip out. So, you know, you're literally just tucking. And the front, do not tuck the front because you want to keep on checking on the baked macaroni. So you're going to do that from the front. So if it's tucked too much, you know, you're going to have to unwrap it. So like tighten it in the front, but literally do not tighten it too much. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna undo it a tad. There's a little hole in this, but it's okay. So yeah, this is how it looks. See it's sucked. Tucked underneath, tucked underneath, tucked underneath, tucked underneath. So yeah, I got a big mess that I have to clean up. But basically guys, yeah, and now it's about to go in the oven. Hello guys, so it's been one hour since I put the baked mac and cheese in. And as you can see, it's very cheesy. It's not quite done. I just took the top off so it can now start to brown. So I'm going to leave it in for another like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, but it is halfway through. It just needs to get crispy and the cheeses, you know, need to form and all that good stuff. So I'll be back in like a half an hour or so to show you guys the update. So the thing about big macaroni and cheese is there's no like exact time, like leave it in for two hours, leave it in for whatever. Like it depends on your oven. It depends on how much mac you have. It depends on how cheesy it is. It depends on a lot of things. So you really just need to just keep on checking on it every like half an hour, every 40 minutes or so. So yeah, it's been an hour. Now I set an alarm for another hour, but I'm not gonna leave it in for the full hour. I'm just gonna keep on checking on it within that hour. So I will be back with an update. Hello guys, so this is an update on the baked macaroni. I came back like a half an hour and this is how it looks. Guys, I am telling you, I am a pro at this. Look, 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 look. Look at the cheesy goodness. Look at the brown. So you can honestly take yours out when it looks like this. But if you want a little bit more crispy, then just leave it in for like 5 to 10 minutes. Make sure to keep checking on it, guys. Do not allow it to burn at the top. Nothing worse than burnt baked mac. But this is excellent. Okay guys, so this is the final product. So I left it in the oven, how long, long? For like, um, it's probably been sitting for like an hour. No, but like we've had it more, it's been in there for like two hours maybe. Yeah, for all uh, combined, probably like two hours. So yes, guys, this baked macaroni has been in the oven for about two hours, an hour to just cook, and then we left it in for like another like 45 minutes or so to just brown. And this is the outcome. Yes, you see it's cheesy, it's delicious, it has that nice crispy top. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make baked macaroni and cheese. Okay guys, so I'm going to take my first slice of this mac and cheese. You see the cheesiness? Let's get some more in there. Now guys, this is what you call baked macaroni and cheese.